Okay guys, welcome to yet another video. Um, I should warn you, there is no gameplay or anything exciting in this video at all. Um, this video is all about the history of the loader on the C64, <laughs> which is probably not the most interesting thing in the world, but you know what, it's party history. Now, Spectrum owners were always, people talk about how long it took to load a Spectrum game. Um, they didn't know how lucky they were. In the very very early days of the C64 it did literally take 15 minutes to load a game. There was no such thing as turbo loaders in the early days. So what you're seeing here is what you got when you were loading a game and you sat and stared at that blue screen for about 15-20 minutes. I shit you not, that was how long it took to load a game before turbo loaders came along. Yep. There was no such thing as a, a loading screen, there was no music, there was nothing, there was just the abyss of light blue. But thankfully that didn't last forever, it probably lasted a good year. The, the funny thing was, I'm sure um, it actually loaded the game twice and that's why it took so long, so if you press run stop it would actually, and then type run, you could sometimes get it to load quicker. But anyway, this one here, Nova Load, this was one of the very, very early turbo loaders that came out for the C64. This particular game is Encounter, and it was by a company, but, well, the company that made Encounter was Novagen, and I believe they were the guys that actually made Nova Load, and they did license it out to other... Uh, other companies, thankfully. <laughs> yep, this was what you got. Don't expect any music. All you get here is little squawks and screams and what have you as the game loads. But this was a revelation to C64 owners because at least you got to see how long it was going to take. I mean that's almost like what, one block a second, so you're talking about a minute and a half. Bear in mind that before the turbo loaders came along, you'd be looking at 10-15 minutes. So this was the very first uh, Nova load. The thing is, it did what you wanted it to do, it loaded the game quick, and that's all you're interested in. The thing is, with the blue screen, you had no idea if it was actually going to work or not, or if it was even loading or not. And if you pressed run, stop and typed in run, and it came up unknown command, then you knew you'd stopped it too early. So that was uh, the first Nova load. Now this one here, Pavloda. It's not a type of sweet. <laughs> You're thinking of uh, Pavlova. Pavloda. I don't know who came up with this one, but the first game I remember seeing this in was... Was it Cavalon? I think it was. By Ocean. Again, there was no music, there was no loading screen, but you did get what the Spectrum had, and that was loading lines. Now, at least when you saw these lines moving up and down like that, you knew it was actually doing something. When the lines stopped mo uh, moving, you knew there was an issue. And generally, it meant you just had to stop it and try again, <laughs> and adjust the tape head and try again. But again, at least the game loaded quick. Um, but like I said, there was no fancy frills. You just got your basic loading lines and that was it. So that was the original PAV loader. Right, this one is a newer version of Nova Load. This was used on... Uh, this was used by Ocean. And this particular game is Daily Thompson's Decathlon. Now this was like a a treat for the eyes because you actually got something to look at. So you get the wee squawks and squeals at the beginning. Hey, we were now getting treated to some nice music. I think this, uh, I think that loading tune was specific just to Dale Thompson's Decathlon. I don't recall it ever being used on anything else, any other uh, ocean games. Might be wrong. 
but I don't remember it being, I think it was just for decathlon. But you've no idea how exciting it was to actually get that, going from having a blank screen which took 20 minutes to a game which loaded in about 2 or 3 with some nice music to listen to, it actually meant that you didn't mind waiting and thinking to load. So this next one, this was uh, the PAV loader again, but you can see there, improved, it featured the ability to rewind in case of a loading error. Goodness me, perish the thought. Now this, uh, this particular game has a little easter egg, a little surprise, which I'm not going to tell you. Can you have to kind of wait in the loader to load? <laughs> now this one was revolutionary, there you go. If the border, meaning if it's flashing it means it's loading data, if it's black it means it's searching, and if it's white it means a tape error. And what you could then do was rewind the tape a wee bit and then try again. But you generally found that if it didn't work once, it wasn't going to work no matter how many times you... you uh, rewound the tape, so generally it was a case of trying to adjust the tape head, but at least it was a start anyway. So yeah, this one, this game had, was quite unique in one way when it was loading, which you're going to find out. Again, okay, the PAV loader didn't have any uh, any music to speak of. But at least you could see it was loading, and that was uh, that was good. And we're getting there. So just picture the scene: you're sat in your bedroom with the volume turned up nice and loud, waiting an exploding fist to load. You sat and waited. The first time I heard that, I literally shat myself. <laughs> Priceless. Yeah, that was Pavloader, that was later on. This one, this is an early, again, I think this is a, yeah, it's a version of Novaload, which the early US game, uh, US Gold Games featured. It had a very, very distinctive uh, loading tune. Again, which made uh, waiting in the game load not quite so tedious. So yeah, anyone watching this that never had an 8-bit computer, you probably think this is absolutely prehistoric, but this is what we had to contend with. None of your discs, none of your CDs, none of your digital downloads, none of your flash drives, none of your ROMs, none of your cartridges, it was all tape. So you have to stand and salute. This was great for two ways because A, it gave you quite a nice wee tune and B, it actually gives you a kind of medley of American tunes and B, it actually showed you how long you had to go. So, you know, 50 odd seconds, that wasn't bad at all. This game, like I said, would have taken 20 minutes to load before the tape loader. Yeah, like I was saying, I believe in the early days before turbos came along, turbo tape loaders came along, the Commodore 64 actually used to load the game in twice. It was just to do with, I think it loaded it in once then it loaded it in a second time as a sort of verification process but sometimes if you're lucky you could actually stop the tape by pressing run stop and type in run and it would actually load but not always but it literally did take 20 minutes to load that's how we rocked back in the day <laughs> Right, this uh, this this particular one here kicked off a bit of a sort of a, a tradition. This was the Ocean Loader. Now the tune was written by the wonderful Martin Galway, who makes an impressive uh, tune. This is a uh, Wizbolt. 
there were various and sorry various incarnations of this, but this was the very first first version which graced quite a lot of games until they decided to change. I don't know why they changed it because it was fantastic anyway. I dare say just to keep it interesting. Now I have actually edited this particular one. It does sit with that flashing screen for quite a bit longer. So what you're seeing here is a slightly shortened version of it. <laughs> I used to sometimes wonder would a game load quicker if it didn't have music and a title screen? I'm guessing it probably would. In my opinion, this is one of the best musical tracks on the C64. The use of the sound is phenomenal. Now, sadly, I didn't actually include the whole thing, but uh, if you go to Google, you'll easily find it. The Ocean Loader is a fantastic tune. So the C64 went from having the worst loading uh, system over the Spectrum because it just had a blue screen and the Spectrum had a nice picture. But then the C64 became the better machine because it gave you a lovely tune to listen to as well as, as, well as a, a really nice kind of picture. I mean, some of the artwork in these loading screens was just fantastic. Right, this one is the second version of the Ocean Loader and it's got a slower version of the same Martin Galway track. I remember at the time hearing that thinking, that sounds different and I, I thought to myself, nah, surely not, it can't, it must be the same, it must be my imagination, but then, yeah, it was, it was just a slower version. Ooh, getting some lines. It was always good when you saw lines because you knew it was actually loading. You knew it was doing something. It's when it just went blank. <laughs> That's when you, you feared the worst. And nine times out of ten, it was the worst. Now you will hear the slight subtle changes to the tune. See that was back when uh, artists were allowed to put their names to loading screens. I'm quite surprised I actually did that. You know, considering it was a kind of a commercial product, you thought they were taking it off, but they seemed to let them get away with it, which is fine. So there was a slight change, this is it was a slower tune. If you listen to the full thing, again if that's the Ocean Loader 2, just Google it, you'll find it. There is a wonderful thing called the High Voltage SID Collection, which is easily download, uh, downloaded and it's basically every SID tune ever, ever you could conceive um, on the C64 or something like 40,000 tunes, so go and check it out. 
Right, this is the third Ocean Loader tune. This one is by, I didn't even see the name. <laughs> I typed a wee message there, but it's a, a different person that did the music. I'm guessing Martin Galway must have been uh, taken away to work on other stuff. Yeah, when it's stopped moving, you're like, is it going to work? Is it going to work? Sometimes, rather than coming up with the name, like Combat School, it was come up, it was like corrupted and you knew it hadn't loaded properly. <laughs> I would hate to think the number of hours, and not just me, probably other 8-bit owners, spent staring at loading screens, wondering if it was going to work or not. What do you see in the main, the C64, if if it started loading, um, if it started loading, then you you tend to find that it would actually work properly. It very rarely crashed at the end. I know the Spectrum was terrible for a game loading, and you had the title screen and everything, and then at the very end, just when the game was about to start, it would just go back to the white screen. But the C64, generally, if you had a problem, it would always be in the sort of first couple of seconds. But once it kind of started loading, invariably it would work. So you can hear the, the difference in this version, a remix type thing. Totally changes. And that's a fantastic picture, it really is. When you think of the limited, you know, resolution, the limited uh, colour palette they're using, it's fantastic. a very good game that combat school. Really, really excellent conversion. Okay, this is the fourth version with the music by Jonathan Dunn. Yeah, it was Jonathan Dunn that done the music for that Ocean 3. But yeah, like I was saying, go and check out High Voltage SID Collection. It's about 30 meg, it's tiny, um, but it's just absolutely bursting with every single SID tune you could ever imagine. Vindicator, don't remember that one. I think by this point, um, <laughs> there you go, it's even advertising, come and see us at this year's PC show. Stand 3101. Um, aye, I think by this point, I think we're probably talking about mid 80s, we're probably talking about 87, 88 at this point. And I think I had moved on, I had moved on to the 16 bit, so I wasn't really aware of these games at that point. It's funny how you, I mean, <laughs> oh, it's a daft thing to say, but you only have nostalgia for uh, for games that you remember, so really anything on the C64 after about 87 is kind of lost in me, and I really don't play any games that were made after that, just because I don't, I didn't play them back in the day, so I've not got the nostalgia. The period of the C64 for me was 83. Three, I would say, late '83, um, right through to about I don't know, mid mid '87. I think it was, or was it mid '88? I think it was mid '88 actually, because uh, I got my what did I get? I sold my C64 to buy an Atari ST. Anyone waffling a wee bit? We're talking about loaders here.
Now that might be monotone, but you know, look at the detail in it, that's phenomenal. That's an incredible piece of artwork. It just shows you what you can do with the skill and the tools, obviously. I mean, I'm guessing the guy probably used some, some sort of, I don't know, light gun, not light gun, <laughs> a light pen or something like that, or he possibly did it on another machine and put it that close, but that's a phenomenal looking picture. That is really impressive. So that was the fourth ocean loader. Let's move on to the last one. This was ocean loader number five. Again, it's got new music by Jonathan Dunn. Renegade three. I actually, I actually looked at that um, in my last video. The what do you call it? They did what? Imagine, and it's a bloody awful game. It's the the baddies. I mean, the graphics for it are really good, but the baddies they picked for Renegade Three are just terrible. Things like killer birds and things like that. Missed opportunity. They should have stuck with your sort of knife wielding thugs and stuff like that. <laughs> you can see there the loading uh, <laughs> the loading lines were just kind of. Freeload, ah, there we go, so it's freeload this system. I did actually Google different loading systems in C64 and there was a phenomenal number of fast loaders. So many. But you'd obviously you wouldn't know what one was what, but all you were interested in was the fact that it was going to get loaded quicker. Again, look at that, it's fantastic. I'm trying to see what the initials are on that. Mm, something G. Don't know what that is. The one thing about tape loaders which they gave which was an advantage over other medias medias I should say. Although it, the fact it took so long to load I mean, nowadays people just they want it loaded instantly, but the fact that it took three or four minutes to load, it meant that you played the game because you had to wait in it loading. You wouldn't just play it for five seconds and switch it off because you knew you had to then wait in another game loading. So when you put a game on, you played it. Whereas if you had a game on cartridge or you know instant instant download, I mean emulators now you can load a game in you know the blink of an eye. Um, and if you don't like it, you can just load another game in the blink of an eye. So you don't you don't play games, but because of the tape, because it you had to wait in a game loading, then it made you play them. Nowadays we're just far too used to instant loading. So that was the ocean number five. Now this one here, this was you can see there, mix e load written by Gary Lydon and the first game it featured on, it might have been the only game it featured on actually, was Delta and that was released by uh, Thalamus Software. Delta Mix Load. Now actually, I was talking to Gary, he was at our computer club, what, was it last year, the year before, and I was asking Gary about the, the Mix Load and he, he said it was actually it was fairly simple to do, but you know, it was incredibly successful. I don't know why they never actually licensed it out to other software houses. There was probably some good reason. Aye, go, going back to waiting on the tape. Yeah, because of the fact that you had to wait in it, it meant you appreciated it, and it meant you actually played the game, but 
if we had instant loading back in 1985, chances are we wouldn't have played the games half as long as we did. So there's a definite advantage. The fact that it's the, the the downside to tape is this, this, the loading speed, but then that also has a flip side, which is an advantage. It's a fact that actually makes you play games. So yep, Delta Mixi Load. This is about to kick in. I can see the wee sound about the bottom. There we go. Now, what this did was, you can see there, you've got four voices. I thought the C6 Pro had three, but they must have used some clever technique. You've got lead, bass, drums and effects. Now, using the joystick, you can move left and right and up and down and change each of these as the game's loading. Now, it does take a few seconds for the new kind of sound to kick in. When I first got this, I didn't think it was actually working, but when you actually listen to it, and wait a second, you do see it. So I'm going to shut up for a second and let you listen to it. So going from a blank screen to something like this where you could actually change the music, alter it, it's just amazing. I always love to be scrolling messages, all the, all the famous names, Julian Eagle Rignall, Gary Grumpy Pen, Steve Newboy Jarrett. <laughs> so that was the Mixie Load, and that was by Thalamus Software. And this is the last one we're going to look at, guys. This is Envy Load, or Envy Load. Finally you could play a game while the main game loaded using the Invalode system. Now I never actually got to play a game using this uh, loading system. I said I'd probably moved on to the Atari ST at this point. Scumball. <laughs> now I think this is actually a Mastertronic game and it was a, a budget game. So you're going to see just what little trick it actually does but the fact that this is on a, a budget game was, was pretty clever. It's not pretty clever, it's quite generous of them actually. But I'll, I'll shut up and you can see what's going to happen. I'm sure there was a lot more other different types of loaders which I haven't included in this. I mean I was only, I've only got the sort of the, the three, four years of experience with the C64 to kind of draw on. Um, but I says uh, I did find out as many as I possibly could. There may have been other things, but yeah, this one here we go and beta load. This is actually a game. It loaded a game which you could play. Now this is me playing it earlier on, and it's actually not bad. It's bloody fiendish. As you can see there, the number of uh, bullets it's dropping are just ridiculous, and it's actually not a bad version of Space Invaders. And you don't just get that, you also get a bloody Rob Hubbard tune playing in the background, I mean that's just mental. And this was just while the game was loading. <laughs> I'm guessing the way it would work, it would uh, load as much as it could, then when the memory was full up, it would stop this game, clear the memory in the same with the tune, because you always found that the music always stopped a couple of minutes before the game finished loading, obviously because it needed the memory for the actual game. But this is actually quite a good little test of the Space Invaders. I almost did it, but this is not quite.
So that is it guys, that is my little uh, history of the C64 load of granted it's not everyone's cup of tea but it's part of history as they say. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed watching it and as usual, thank you so much for watching.